Hello everybody, I am back with another tricky opening lines that can arise from the modern Scandinavian and today we are going to be looking at bishop to b5 check as a third move by white. So this is known to be one of the most challenging continuations for white in the modern Scandinavian and I have always found this move to be very annoying as it kind of threw away my preparations with the Gandalf Gambit the Portuguese Gambit and the Xena attack. But that is until now, because thanks to this guy, I will show you some tricks that you will have up your sleeve against this variation. This guy, I'm sorry, but I'm afraid to pronounce your name. <laughs> he shared this idea in the comment section and after analyzing it, I decided I want to add it to my repertoire not because he wanted to name it the Saruman Strap, which kind of go well with my repertoire of the Gandalf Gambit, but because this will really be fun tricks, which uh, is very likely to work for you and me as well. So the logic behind the naming of the Saruman Strap is that we are at some point going to sacrifice this rook, which would represent the falling tower of Isengard and on the other side, this rook is going to be just kind of a bystander of its kingdom demolition. And so that is the, the Sauron's tower with that eye on top. And this little guy, that's actually the Saruman. So he is the one getting trapped <laughs> just to make stuff clear. So our next move is going to be knight to d7 to simply block the check. And in this position, most players are going to continue with pawn to c4 as they want to cover this pawn because it was already hanging. We can continue with pawn to a6, harassing the bishop. If the bishop decides to exchange itself for our knight, we are totally fine with this. We will win a bishop pair and also white would lose their only developed piece. So things would be great for black. But of course, most people are going to just retreat the bishop to a4. Well, after that, we are going to hit them with pawn to b5. So they are naturally going to capture this pawn and now we are going to capture the pawn on d5 with our knight. Let me just briefly explain our guy. He likes to capture uh, the pawn on b5 in this position because after bishop recaptures, now they can recapture this pawn on d5 and this sort of give an opportunity to white to play bishop to c6 where they would hit our knight and the rook and that move would actually be walking into our trap. But the problem is that in this position, most players will play simply knight to c3, a developing move which is perfectly fine for white. So that's why I recommend you to first capture the pawn on d5, because in this position, most players are going to capture the pawn on c6. I mean a6. <laughs> it looks kind of okay move for white it uh, renews this spin and it it is a captured so the tension is now over but it is a little bit of a mistake because here we can recapture with the bishop and now our bishop is very strong controlling this dangerous diagonal and on top of everything most white players will blunder on the next move with either bishop to c6 or even knight to c3 in this position would be a losing mistake. The only correct move in this position would be to play knight to e2. I will talk about it in a minute. Let me just go a little bit back because I said after we, recap after we capture this pawn on d5, capturing on a6 is a mistake. So what is the correct approach by white? Well, that's the second most played move and that's knight to c3. Here I would simply recommend you to go back with your knight to b6 because now we are hitting this bishop and we know white players they love their <laughs> light square bishop. Most players here are going to uh, go back to b3 to have a target on f7 and after that we can capture this pawn so the material is equal although white can capture it with a knight and that's what most of the players do. This is not very good for white because we can develop our bishop to a6. So now the knight is hit and after it moves somewhere, we still have a control of this nice diagonal. 
protecting the, the knight with uh, pawn doesn't work. We can capture it and they are not able to recapture back because of this spin. So the knight needs to move. Usually it goes back uh, to c3. If uh, they would go to d4, that would be a losing mistake also. But most of the players go to c3 and after that we can go knight to e5. So we are threatening to go to d3 with a check. So most of the players are going to try to stop it with bishop to c2. But we are still going to deliver this check and after they capture we can capture with our queen and in this position although we are down one point of material we have already uh, an attack going on and the stockfish says that this is better for black. All right let's not go too deep into these lines because as I said after you capture this pawn on d5 uh, most played move is pawn captures on a6 so here we can recapture with the bishop and in this position as I mentioned the only correct move is knight to e2 so let's have a look at this move first and then we will discuss how to punish uh, the moves bishop to c6 or knight to c3 so here I would recommend that you immediately capture this knight with your bishop and although Stockfish isn't really a fan of this move, I like it because of practical reasons. Simply recapturing with their queen is a losing mistake because now this bishop is hanging and we can capture it with the rook and we will be up a piece. So this is a tactics that I believe many players uh, can overlook. I myself would definitely uh, <laughs> fall for this trap if I was white. So they cannot capture with the queen. They kind of are forced to capture with the king and just uh, voluntarily bone cloud their own Saruman to the e2 square. Although there is another option for white and that is to throw in an intermenzo move. And at this position they can capture here with a check. So if they capture the knight on d7 with check, now we have to capture with our queen and here they are indeed able to capture this bishop on e2 with their queen. But this is still losing after knight to f4. Here we are hitting Saruman's wife, also this pawn. And it may appear that queen to e4 just saves everything. It defends this, it attacks our knight and also it attacks this uh, uncovered rook. But this is uh, not good for white after knight to d3 check. So here we are also hitting this unprotected bishop. If for some reason Saruman <laughs> likes his bishop and wants to take care of it, we can hit him with this royal fork. So that's not playable. They have to go uh, king to f1. And after that, first of all, we need to go away with our rook because, well, it is hanging. But we have a nice useful square for our rook and that is rook to a5 because our next plan is going to be rook to e5 followed by rook to e1 checkmate so right now white needs to protect his bishop because it is still hanging so the correct move here is to play knight to c3 so the rook now covers this bishop and after that uh, we would like to continue with this plan, but it's not yet possible because white has an option to go queen to a8 check and this would lead to a perpetual checks uh, which would result in a draw, but we want to win. So in this position uh, it is the best to play pawn to f5. So we hit the queen, uh, the queen is uh, forced to move and we are also preparing a luft for our king so there will be no perpetual check in the event of queen to a8 check. So here uh, the best square for queen would be to go to b7 and we can continue with our plan rook to e5 threatening checkmate on the e1 square and in this position white is forced to deal with this with either blocking this e-file with the knight or pushing some pawns in order to have a room for their king to run away but in either way this is going to be winning for black we can start launching our pawns forward and create some some pawn breaks uh, later joining this bishop d attack and 
all right let me know go let's let's not go any deeper than this in this line because it's not as fun as the therapy therapy lines that i'm about to show you so actually as i mentioned in this position after we capture the knight on e2 white should capture it with the saruman and in this position the stockfish says that white is slightly better but in my opinion well they cannot castle anymore we are better in development and our next plan would be to i, I believe to push this pawn and well yeah we would like to push this pawn and just bring our our bishop and our queen into some kind of attacking positions this is already attacking stuff later we can castle and we have a safe king and yeah i think this should be pretty okay for black if they play this move so let's go back because after bishop captures on a6 the the most played move is a blunder knight to c3 so here we are going to go knight to b4 and with this we are threatening to go to d3 with a check which would be pretty nasty as it would force the king to some of this light square where it will get hit with this bishop's x-rays so i checked the database and the most players are trying bishop to c2 to have some kind of control over this square but unfortunately for saruman our army consists of not only one knight but we have two of them and our second knight is nicely situated to jump to the c5 square and now both of the knights are threatening to deliver this deadly d3 check and there is no stopping this for white the stockfish here recommends to develop a knight to e2 to kind of block this diagonal a little bit but we are still going to jump to d3 with a check so if they capture the knight here we can actually recapture with the bishop now the stockfish suggests for white to just castle and save their saruman and hide it in the corner and after that we have a nasty trapping of their queen <laughs> with bishop to c2 hitting the queen the queen can only go to e1 and after that knight to d3 simply traps saruman's wife <laughs> all right so that doesn't work let's see what the stockfish says and instead uh, of going bishop to c2 what should uh, white play so the stockfish is suggesting two moves and one of them is knight to e2 and the second one is queen to f3 so let's first have a look at uh, knight to e2 so already kind of foreseeing uh, the next events and trying to block this di diagonal as soon as possible well here we are uh, right away able to deliver this knight to d3 check so we force the king to f1 and after that we can push d4 so the idea behind this move is to free our bishop and our queen to join the attack here stockfish is recommending queen to b3 and after that we unleash our queen with queen to h4 so right now we are threatening a checkmate and i would like to point out that you don't have to be scared of this capture because uh, whenever they capture this knight with a check and you recapture with the king they have this queen captures on f7 and it may look like they have something but actually they don't you can just block this so they should give this check now you can just walk your king back and there are no more checks for them and this only helps you because now <laughs> your rook is able to come to the f file and wow well, <laughs> everybody will join the fight against the f2 square and this is just deadly uh, that's what i love about these gambits you just have so much more pressure against them all right let's go back so what happens if they try to save this checkmate uh, with pawn to g3 so this seems like the most human move you can go uh, queen to h3 check 
so king to g1 is forced and here you can simply add another powerful piece to the attack with bishop to c5 threatening to capture on c2 so let's say here because this is a fine line let's say here white tries to capture this knight with a check to you know have some a little bit of their own attack <laughs> before they're done so they capture also with the queen on f7 here you can go king to c8 and they have no more checks and you are threatening to capture with your bishop on f2 which would be a checkmate but of course there is another possibility for them to give up the queen for this bishop yeah so they might try to go knight to e4 to cover the f2 square and here you can finish them off with either bishop to b7 so you are threatening the knight the knight is pinned it cannot move because then it would allow queen to g to checkmate and they cannot save this knight with i don't know with the pawn because uh, the pawn is also pinned uh, <laughs> or there is even a cooler move in my opinion and it is knight to e1 and who is stopping this queen to h2 i mean g2 checkmate well nobody actually yes somebody they have an option to play queen to e6 check but it's just a free queen of course and bye bye saruman okay so enough of this line there are plenty more lines how white can try to uh, survive the attack but it's a losing position and i think uh, we have no time to go through all of these lines in this video so it's not super long so let's just uh, focus on the second move that Stockfish recommends and that's queen to f3 and by the way I will try to cover more lines in the leeches study that will be in the description. So if queen to f3 is played this will lead to uh, funny variations which are a little bit weird but bear with me <laughs> I will do my best to explain the situations too. So we can still continue with knight to d3 check now king to f1 or king to e2 is not very good because it allows for some discard checks so king to d1 is the move to play and after that we are going to play pawn to c6 so basically hanging our pawn two different ways but if they capture with the queen it leaves the f2 pawn without the guard so i don't think they would play this but if they do, if, do, if you see this move, you can capture this pawn with a check, but you don't want to really capture uh, the rook in the corner because the stockfish is saying that this knight is really, really powerful and it is not worth it to, uh, to, go, <laughs> to jump with the knight to the corner where it's not so active, even though you capture a rook. It's better to keep the knight in the center uh, to control some squares around the Saruman. So just so we know that but anyways i believe uh, most players here would capture with the bishop so they hit your rook but you can go rook to c8 and that was actually the point of pushing this pawn and having it captured because now your rook is nicely controlling this whole file and also your queen is free to move around this diagonal so after rook to c8 Stockfish is suggesting for white to develop their knight to e2 and after this uh, there are two moves I would like to consider for black. One of them, the weirder one, is pushing pawn to e6. So the idea behind this is of course to have the ability to move this bishop somewhere and also this queen on this diagonal. And here Stockfish is saying that the only correct move for white is to bring bishop back to e4 and try to, to exchange it for this knight. But uh, yes, we have two knights and we can go knight to e5. So if they capture this knight, we can still recapture with our knight and we still have knight on the d3. Stockfish loves the knight on d3 square so much <laughs> that actually... Uh, the queen was hanging here but the stockfish is saying it's the best for white to capture this knight 
And here we don't even want to capture the queen, we want to rather capture this bishop so that our knight can be on the d3 square. <laughs> That's just uh, interesting. <laughs> well, the point is, I believe, that if they try to move uh, the queen in this position, there is actually no good square for the queen to go to. Stockfish says the best square if they are uh, trying to save the queen is to go queen to g3. But after that we will play bishop to e7 and we are threatening to go to h4 and we will hit the f2 pawn with the tempo on the queen and that combined with this is uh, deadly. So in this position they would have to play pawn to h4 for, uh, in order to stop our bishop from coming here. Well, all right, let's not go any deeper because I don't want to waste so much of your time. I would maybe recommend here instead of pushing this pawn, uh, another move, and this is kind of more, more easy to understand for a human mind, and that is to go knight to e5. So now we are hitting the queen and also this bishop. Because of this, the response is forced from white. They need to capture on d7 with check. And after we capture with the queen, now they have to uh, try to go for the queen exchange. Anything else is just not good for them, <laughs> even though this is also losing. But here we have a nice trick. We can capture the queen and after they recapture with the knight, we want to jump back to d3 with our knight. So here, if you notice, we are threatening to capture on f2 and simply win the rook next turn. And the only way for white to try to hold on to the f2 pawn would be with rook to f1. And after that we can capture this bishop. So they recapture with the rook and we can capture the rook. And here, if they capture with the king, we simply capture this knight and we are up a piece. And if they don't capture with the king but with their knight, well, then they just hang their rook, which is even worse. Alright, so this was the trick. Let's go back. Actually, uh, a rook to g1 is the move that Stockfish is recommending, just to give up the f2 with the check. But enough of this line. Let's go back and let's have a look at the last line. So we've been just analyzing uh, the blunder of knight to c3. Now let's have a look at the second most played move and that is bishop to c6. So here white is feeling pretty confident that they caught off, <laughs> that they caught us off guard and they are forking our knight and our rook, but we are going to shock them with knight to b4 anyways. So in this position, most players are going to greedily capture our rook on a8. But this is, uh, I believe, one of the worst moves that they can play because we can deliver this deadly check with knight to d3. And now this is the good stuff. We are forcing this king to one of these two light square where it is later going to be hit with this light square bishop. So let's say king to f1. Here you can imagine uh, already winning the queen with knight captures on b2, uh, which would be a discard check and the next turn you could uh, just collect this queen. But it's even stronger here to first capture this bishop on a8. And the reason is the queen is lost anyways. <laughs> this knight on d3 is just so good it dominates Saruman's wife so hard that no matter where she runs, she will be captured on the next turn. <laughs> Try pausing the video and see for yourself, there is no square for the queen to go. Even if it would go to, I don't know, the furthest point on the chessboard, h5, we can still go knight to f4. It is a discard check and we can pick up this queen next turn. So if they are not able to capture our rook on a8, what should they do? Well, most players are trying to go back with the bishop to e4 and try to control the d3 square, but this is the same story as before. 
we can go knight to c5. So we have both knights staring at the d3 square and it is unstoppable threat. Usually people are trying queen to f3 here uh, to support the bishop, but we can capture it. And after they recapture it, the queen knight to d3 comes anyways. And here, if king goes to f1, then yes, you know what to do. And if king goes to d1, then <laughs> you can do this. All right, guys. So that would be for these variations. I feel kind of uh, sorry uh, for this analysis because I couldn't cover all the crazy lines, but you know, I don't want to have this, little, uh, this video to be like super long and there is just so many good stuff and good variations that I just feel sorry about that. I hope you understand. I hope you learn something. I hope you will have fun trying this Saruman's trap. Uh, have fun, take care and goodbye.